Hey there everybody, welcome back. Um, I know it's been a while since my last video. Um, I've recently started breeding fish, um, focusing on some more rare types of fish, so I wanted to start giving you guys some one-take videos about some, some of the ways that I breed some of the fish that I do. Um, this one right here is going to be about how to culture and filter out paramecium. Um, I recently started trying to breed spotted Congo puffers. I haven't have yet to successfully raise any of the fry yet, but the fry come out extremely small, smaller than uh, smaller than Daphnia. They can't take baby brine shrimp or even micro worms or vinegar eels up until they're until they're about two to three weeks old. So, for the first 16 to 21 days of their life, they have to feed on paramecium. So, I have my paramecium culture here. You can see how cloudy the water is in here. All that cloudiness, that's the paramecium. Let's see if I can pull the bit forward a little bit, see if it'll focus. All those little dots and floaty things in there, that's the paramecium. I've already filtered this, what's in this jar a little bit. I'll show you how I go. Tell you first how I went about making the culture. Um, this big one right here, this was my first culture that I made. It's it took some of these, this is a uh, shrimp snowflake food. It's pretty much just compressed soybean husks. So it's a good organic material for you to start your paramecium culture with because that's what you want is some type of organic material because that's as it rots, that's what they feed off of. And then I uh, put a few, uh, put like five or six pieces of this in here, and then with some water from one of my tanks, and then I took one of the uh, sponge pieces out of one of my hang on back filters and I wringed it out really good in there, and then I just let it sit with some light going on it 24 hours a day. I put it underneath one of my aquarium stands. Um, Within three days, the water got really, really cloudy, and that's what you want to see. You want to see that bacterial bloom. Um, after a few days, like one or two days after that, if you take a flashlight, this is, I found one of the, the flashlights, probably one of my most uh, most used tools in the aquarium hobby these days. And you take the flashlight, and you can start seeing everything floating around. Um, this culture is just about reached the end of its lifespan, which is why I made a second culture here. As you can see, this culture is still pretty clear. I just made it today. I'm using an old cat treat container. Um, you can see the stuff floating around at the bottom. That's the soybean husks. This one, since the culture's already started and there's plenty of paramecium in there, I'm just putting it in my windowsill for right now. Don't need it to grow super, super fast. But one of the hardest things about this food is how much these cultures stink and how rancid this water is. Um, you don't want you want to put as little of this water into your tank as possible. But the food is so small. How do you filter? It? How do you filter it out, uh, the water out of it? Well, the first thing I do is I use an Artemia sieve for baby brine shrimp. I pour my water through this first and it removes all the rotifers, which are the bigger um, the bigger creatures that will start growing in this. You'd really be surprised how many creatures are just floating around in your aquarium water that just need a chance to grow. Um, so I pour it through this first and it takes it from what that looks like to this right here. And then the next step after that is I have some laboratory filter paper discs these are 10 microns to give you an idea usually your average coffee filter is about 25 microns this is two and a half times finer than that at 10 microns as you can see there's a I cut it to size to fit the inside of a mason jar lid pretty much I just take one of these lids Put it down on the put it down on the disc and take a razor blade and cut it out and it fits perfectly inside the lid. And then I screw the lid on 
And as you can see, it's such a fine filter that this jar has been sitting upside down with the filter paper on it. And I don't think I've seen a drip yet. Nope, there's one. But this would take you literally a jar this size, like, days to filter out if you just waited for just gravity. So I found a little, a little, th a little fix, you know, it's just simple physics that work. You got a uh, medicine syringe. Um, two bodies cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So using this, just air, take the jar, put this right up to where the, let me switch hands so you can see, see it better. Put this right up to the filter paper, inject some air in there. You see the air bubbles going, and the air going in forces the water through the filter paper even faster. You can do this, it makes it to where you can filter a jar like this instead of in days and probably about a half hour. It does take uh, quite a bit of commitment when you're breeding fish that need stuff that's this small. And also when doing this, make sure you don't inject too much air into it. I had one time where I was doing this and I got down to the last little bit and I was getting kind of impatient so I just kept on injecting air without waiting for the pressure to go down inside the bottle and my disc blew out. So everything that I had filtered in here just went rushing into the water down below. It was a bummer. It was because uh, I had to refill the jar like several times that time and I had probably a good half gallon of paramecium concentrated down into just a couple ounces of water and that's the main reason for this is that the paramecium cannot go through the filter disc they're too big to go through the 10 micron the paramecium's are normally about 15 to 20 microns big so they can't go through that so they stay in here and the excess water that's all smelly and stinky goes down here and it has nothing in it. So, since this is a one-take video, I don't think I'll show you the entire process of filtering out this entire jar. Um, let's see if you can see the difference in the water, how cloudy it is up here. There's like, it's still a dirty water, but the cloudiness is gone. Compared to up here. So that's that with uh, how to culture and para uh, filter paramecium. I would say that these cultures probably last three weeks to a month before they start getting so bad that the uh, paramecium start kind of dying off at the same time that they're breeding and multiplying. So um, as the water clears up in here, you always want it to stay a little cloudy because they feed off the bacteria. As the water clears up, you can put a... Uh, what I like to do is I like to take a little shot glass. I like to take probably about one to two milliliters of water and put it in that shot glass with warm water and a tiny little bit of yeast and stir it up and let it sit for about 10-15 minutes so it activates and then I pour that water in here it gets nice and cloudy and uh, you'll see a population boom within usually about 24-48 hours of that and the water will clear up again um, you want to keep some some form of bacteria in there um, the once a week I'll drop another pellet of the soybean husks in there. It's a really simple, really easy culture to do. It's just time consuming and smelly. So I don't recommend you doing it anywhere where somebody's going to get mad at the smell. But it's perfect for really small fish, it's really small fry, very newborn fry. If you're going to, um, I know some killifish come out really small, some betas. Uh, Scarlet baddies, uh, tiger baddies, um, 
the elasomas, the uh, pygmy sunfishes, they all come out really super small as fries. Uh, the spotted Congo puffer, uh, it's a man, that thing comes out so so small. But usually, I, I, I got some of my tips on how to filter this stuff out from just scouring YouTube, but this was the one tip that I hadn't seen was how to filter it. A lot of people, from what I've seen, they just stick their stick their syringe or they'll, they'll put their flashlight up against their culture because they say that the paramecium will gravitate towards the light similar to uh, brine shrimp. I don't find that to be very effective and then I'm just sucking up a like a loose concentration of paramecium with a whole bunch of that dirty water that I'm now putting into a fry tank where I want the waters to be as pristine as possible for them. So, take a big old jar like this, all this water volume with all this paramecium, and I'll concentrate it down to where it's just the amount of water that's sitting in the lid. And then I'll take it in and I'll dump all that into my spotted Congo puffer tank, the fry tank. So, but thanks, for, thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for another one.